All right, welcome back to Fleck and Socks, the podcast, episode 144. Today on the show, things with the border are worse than ever, and you won't believe who Joe Biden just blamed for it. Then, the Bud Light saga is far from over. We're going to give you the correct take there. Then, in Urban Decay, there are 30 schools in Illinois where not one student is proficient in reading at their grade level. We're going to tell you where all the money went. And last but not least, was Kurt Cobain trans? This Muppet thinks so, and we'll tell you why he might be right. All this and more, it's Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 144, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words, but at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. It's Fluckus Talks, the podcast, featuring Richard the Rap All right, one for one on the intro, as always. Guys, do you like the show? Do you catch every episode and pretty much agree with all of our takes? Do you think the show's culturally significant? That being said, do you also not really get involved in politics in your real life because you don't want to ruffle any feathers at your job or at your school, but you do want to get involved in the fight in some way? Well, I'm here to tell you a way to do just that, and that is by joining FleckusTalks.com and becoming a member for just seven bucks a month right now. By joining FleckusTalks.com, you'll be ensuring that Fleckus Talks the podcast continues for years to come, spreading a message that you believe. Maybe you're thinking, Fleckus, I don't have a lot of extra time. I don't know if I can catch every bonus land episode. That's okay. You don't even have to watch but you still can support us financially to keep the show going and to keep us in the fight for you. If you want to support the work we're doing here on the show, joining FleckusTalks.com is the way to do just that. And if you are a show watcher and bonus land enjoyer, you are going to love today's bonus land episode. We are going to be doing a deep dive into the Tucker Putin interview that just dropped. FleckusTalks.com is the website. Sign up now. You'll get over four hours of exclusive content each month. If you space it out correctly, you could basically get four Fleckus Talks the Podcast episodes a week. Lots of people are doing that. Sign up and support something you believe in. FleckusTalks.com is the website. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to Bonusland for sponsoring. Thank you, Bonusland. Very nice. That was an expensive sponsorship. Yeah. This show would not exist without Bonusland members. So if you skipped the ad, which I hope you didn't, please go back and watch. Uh, but if not, uh, we are going to be covering the Tucker Putin interview in today's Bonus Land episode. So make sure you're signed up and ready for that. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. All right. First real story of housekeeping. Joe Biden has been found to have mishandled the documents based on the DOJ investigation. But it sounds like because he's too old and mentally unwell, he's going to be not held accountable. Yeah. Too, <laughs> too stupid. Too stupid to go to jail, pretty much. That's pretty good. Um, Thomas Massey had an interesting tweet about it that kind of summed it up. Yeah, he said special counsel just reported that Biden willfully retained and disclosed classified materials and engaged in practices that present serious risks to national security. Even more disturbing, Biden would lack a mental state of willfulness necessary to prosecute. So he can't even get nine jurors to agree. (laughs) They're they're all going to 100 percent go. This guy. No, no, no. He just needs to go to a home and lay down. Oh, it's called a two way go. He's good enough to handle the nuclear codes and go for re-election, but if you press him with charges, he's too stupid. Yeah, and that's kind of like the interesting catch-22 we're in because it's either he's competent, so he should be charged Mm -hmm. because he knows what he did, or he's not competent and he shouldn't be the president. And then he gave that speech last night, um, you know, right at the end of the Tucker stuff when that came out, where he basically said, oh, I'm all good. Everything's on my side. The DOJ did a good job, an exhaustive investigation. They didn't find anything. And it's like, well, what about all those parts about you forgetting when your son died and you forgetting you were vice president? Didn't he say, how dare they or something? Yeah, he said, how dare they? Of course I know when my son died. Yeah, meanwhile, Karine Jean-Pierre is explaining away why you've brought up two dead politicians over the last week. And, uh, you know, the American public is just confused, I guess. Yeah, there was an excerpt from the investigation. Um, We have some of the yellow highlighted here. Can you give that a read, Richard? Uh, It said, in his interview with our office, Mr. Biden's memory was worse. He did not remember when he was vice president, forgetting on the first day of the interview when his term ended, if it was 2013. When did I stop being vice president? 
and forgetting on the second day of the interview when his term began in 2009. Am I still vice president? He did not remember even within several years when his son Bo died. Couldn't even ballpark it. Couldn't even ballpark it. So, well, that's what happened. So maybe they're setting something up. Maybe this is the setup that we've been talking about that is coming. Uh, maybe it's Michelle Obama steps in. He goes, I'm too old. I need a person of color to take my place who's <laughs> not Kamala Harris because no one would ever vote for her. Michelle Obama, here you go. All right. Super Bowl weekend. Yeah, coming up. Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers. Yep. You got it. <laughs> I said Nimers. I know. <laughs> You're <laughs> acting like it's my first day here. <laughs> I like sneaking it in. And then you tell the person, hey, it was actually, I said Orlando, mm -hmm. not Orlando. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your predictions? Uh, I don't know. I don't really care. I would assume Patrick Mahomes just sneaks another win in. Um, the other guy is like a young quarterback. Can't really do it. I mean, he's good, but, you know, Patrick yeah. Mahomes, it's going to be, you're going to be a footnote on the getting steamrolled by Patrick Mahomes career charts, you know? Yeah. Brock Purdy is still the type of guy who can throw two picks in a game. And the Super Bowl, light, bright lights, come on. Yeah, exactly. My prediction is 28-27, Kansas City. My prediction is 35-31, Kansas City. 38-37, Kansas City. I'm just trying to get a couple okay. <laughs> so we can cut back and be like, fuck, I got it right. For sure. Um, also, there's like a parlay I'd like to do. Travis Kelsey, MVP, parlayed into an engagement after the game. Okay. That's, I mean, you're, you act like you're the first one to predict that that's kind of standard lore at this yeah. point, right? Of like, course. Of course. I just wanted to get it on the record. I don't even want that to happen. I know. I don't like Travis Kelsey. I don't want him to be the MVP and I don't even want the chiefs to win, yeah. but I do need to gamble. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> clearly. All right, let's get into the show. We have a great show, a very important housekeeping as always more pages of housekeeping. Okay. Uh, Nikki Haley continues to humiliate herself. Yeah, she lost uh, the Nevada primary to, quote, none of the above. So pathetic individual all around. <laughs> yeah, just begging <laughs> for scraps. Yeah, she's begging for scraps. The deep state's keeping her around and it almost makes you kind of alarmed. Yeah. What do they need an extra candidate for that does all their policies? Yeah, they just need a body out there. Uh, she should have quit already. Like, this should be over, right? Yeah. Um, and our all the money should be going to causes to, like, get Republicans voting. Yeah. For one man, Donald for, Trump. For real, for real. He's got it. All right. Also, uh, Ronna McDaniel is going to resign. Yeah, she's out. Um, That's good. I mean, it took a while. Yeah, it's kind of late. You know, we got like nine months left on the clock. <laughs> yeah, she did a lot of damage. Yeah. So, I mean, R Ronna McDaniel oversaw a bunch of like losses, the 2022 midterms in between, like when Biden already sucked, we kind of didn't steamroll anybody. Mm -hmm. And so uh, time for some fresh blood. I don't know. Yeah. And I don't know who it's going to be, but there are some it's a small circle of names. And uh, Do you know how it goes. Yeah. It's uh, going to be some Muppet who it's going to be like Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> Or some person who's like God. not even a Republican. We don't even trust them. So hard. But they get let in for somehow. Uh, you know, yeah. that's just kind of how it goes. Yeah. Another pathetic individual. All right. Let's get into some of the stories. Did you know? Well, this is a New York Post article. They're trying to convince us. It says long held belief that bugs are attracted to light disproved in new study. Yeah. Do you, you believe that? No. You disprove what? A thousand years of human observation. Come on. But here goes to light. Exactly. Here, exactly. Like a moth to the flame. Isn't like, that like in a, it's a meatloaf the song? The sayings don't come out of nowhere. Come on, guys. We, we don't need a study. It. We see it. You have a lamp and it gets buzzed and the things are flying around the lights all the time. We've seen it. Yeah. But I think they're trying to prime us for something. Uh, they want us to get the idea that something that we believe to be true and know to be true could have been not true the whole time. Okay. So there could be something coming where this is just a seed that's being planted and there could be something coming that is going to like shatter our worldview. Okay. Maybe even the shape of the world itself Ooh. could be revealed. Okay. So they're trying to get this in your mind that like, hey, something you think is true 100% actually might have been entirely wrong. So when the next thing comes, they try to tell us, we'll actually be like ready to receive it because they lightened it up and they started us off with a smaller bite. So it's a gaslighting warm up drill yeah. is what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So right. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, maybe it could be, like I said, the earth shape. Maybe it could be about the Madame Tussauds wax museum. Ooh, real people. Is that, what are you? Nah, I just don't believe in that shit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I don't believe <laughs> I've been doing this thing lately. I did it on the Vegas trip too. When we passed Madame Tussauds and I was like, oh, Madame Tussauds. 
I'm not going in there. I don't believe in that shit. And it's like, <laughs> don't believe in it? Like, what do you mean? You don't think they're real? Or it's like a $10 you, admission museum yeah. thing. Like, I don't know. There's definitely wax figurines in there. So <laughs> what do you not believe in? But that's how I like to keep it. Yeah. All right. I like to keep it broad. You like to keep it obscure. You like to keep it nonsensical. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Like a moth away from the flame. Well, they don't even like the flames, you know. Yeah. Technically, it's like a Redditor saying that. Yeah. Actually, according to studies, it's like, do you ever see a light in the woods and there's a million moths flying around it? Are there a million moths flying everywhere and you're just only seeing the moths in that area because of the light? No. Gaslight warm up. Yeah. Gaslight warm up 2024 coming your way. Bud Light update. Okay. Yeah. Trump had a uh, big. Uh, post on Truth Social, the Bud Light ad was a mistake of epic proportions, and for that, a very big price was paid. Was paid. But Anheuser-Busch is not a woke company, but I can give you plenty that are, and building less, blah, blah, blah. He basically said, lighten up on Bud Light. Stop punching. And that's what's been going around, and Dana White, he's calling around, too. He's calling the influencers, and he's trying to tell them, hey, Bud Light's a good company. They yep. employ farmers and veterans and do all these things. They spend, like, $700 million on American farmers for all the hops and stuff, right? Yeah. And here's the Which thing. Which is true. That is true. And that there is a world where Bud Light is redeemed, but we need to hear it from Bud Light directly. Mm -hmm. We need Bud Light to come on the camera, the CEO or the highest guy up there. No ladies. No ladies. Don't no women. send a lady out there. You need to send out a CEO and have him say, hey, we're done with that twink shit. It was a horrible mistake. We fired the lady whose idea that was. That doesn't align with Bud Light. We love America. You'll sell every Bud Light ever. Exactly. We were done with the twink shit. That lady got fired. Yeah. Let's all move on. Yeah, ex exactly. And Don't until uh, that lady got fired. And until they do that, Bud Light is dead. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I'm okay. Oh, yeah, you know, Bud Heavy or like some of the other brands, you know. Or technically they're owned by Anheuser-Busch. Exactly. Some of those, those get weaker as, as time goes on. But until they do an on-camera and 50 grand to us, yeah. personally, um, until they do the on-camera, that was some twink shit, Bud Light is dead. Bud Light is dead until they apologize and acknowledge the twink shit directly. They're not going to do that. But if they did, they would sell out every beer ever. And then they might, there's no world where they go, hey, that twink shit was a mistake. That lady got fired. And then their stock price goes down. Yeah. Unless like BlackRock tries to fuck with you, which yeah. they might. They might. They might. They might be the ones, you know, squeezing them behind the back. Yeah. But it's not, it's not like, uh, oh, the proxies are saying this. And obviously uh, Trump is friends with Dana White. And this is all it's oh, and Shane Gillis gets a deal. It's like, yeah, you're you're towing in the right direction, but you haven't really disavowed any twink shit. So for that reason, Bud Light is still gay. Bud Light is still gay. Bud Light is still dead. No one buy Bud Light. And also don't buy Don't even uh, the, besides this, aside from the take, mm -hmm. but drinking beer is gross. Yeah, I don't even like drinking beer and like light, cheap beer. Yeah, it's like. We're trending away from drinking alcohol True. as a society. I True. think. True. I think. So Bud Light, if you want, you can't just send high-end endorsements out there. The Shane Gillises, the Travis Kelsey, yeah. Uh, yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah. You can't do that. You need to actually have a message directly from Bud Light that says, that acknowledges the twink The shit. funny part is also that Bud Light paid Travis Kelsey a bunch of money to be in a Bud Light commercial, but then at the same time he was in a Pfizer ad. So like they're like getting Pfizer hate uh, too uh, lumped in. It's like, I can't even get it right. Yeah. They really can't get it right. If you asked us what to do, yeah, we'd be able to get it right for you. Disavow the twink shit. Publicly do bits and laugh about how you fired the lady. Yeah, that's and it. And then also maybe say, "Hey, this weekend all all sales will be donated to the to the military. Yeah, or veterans. And, and the military is eighty five percent trans. That's true. So, so we're who back we, on the twink shit. I know. You can't all even right. avoid the all twink right. shit these days. Just disavow and say we fired the yeah, lady. Yeah, disavow directly acknowledge the twink shit. All right, page two of housekeeping. Really important stuff. We have an immigration section. This is an immigration update for the ages. Yeah. Biden. Yeah. Look what he said. Look who he blamed for the, the millions and millions of third worlders here. Every day between now and November, the American people are going to know that the only reason the border is not secure is Donald Trump and his MAGA Republican friends. Is that us? <laughs> so fucking crazy. Are we crazy. his MAGA Republican friends? Dude, and some people were saying like, oh, this is a brilliant move. They, the Democrats put out this shitty border bill that included $60 billion for Ukraine and $15 billion for Israel. And oh, and the Republicans struck it down. So now he can blame it. It's like, does anybody believe that Joe Biden 
and is right that the MAGA Republicans are responsible. Like, yeah, it's it, such a leap. It's Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans because the bill on Tuesday didn't pass. That's yeah. why there's 50 million illegals here. Yeah, because the Tuesday bill from last week, <laughs> that, that the caravan in 2022, that's because of Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, and, dude, it's it's like a master class in, we're talking about gaslighting warm-ups, master class in gaslighting. And then also it kind of shows you, like, what a Joe Biden's been in the Senate and whatever for 50 years at this point. Mm -hmm. He's a real sociopath, sick fuck. Yeah. Like, he has no problem getting on camera and saying that type of shit. Yeah, exactly. And the people who run Joe Biden think you're mentally disabled, too. Again, yeah, they don't just think you're dumb. They think you're retarded. They think you're barely tuning in. Exactly. <laughs> but it's showing crazy. up to vote. And there was a funny thing. Well, not funny, but it's funny to me. ICE said uh, they're going to stop deporting if the Republicans don't pass the bill. It says White House says ICE will reduce deportations, detention capacity if Republicans don't pass the border bill. You guys aren't doing shit anyway. Yeah. Everyone's here. Oh, you're going to stop now? They're already here. You already stopped. Yeah. It's already like, what, 20 million? I don't I don't even know. I jump around on numbers all the time, and nobody really knows, right? Yeah, exactly. So we have to babysit these third worlders. They're visibly draining our resources. Yeah. Like, we're seeing our airports and our schools and our community centers being turned into migrant facilities before our eyes. We're seeing our budgets get cut, and then the money is given to them before our eyes. We're seeing our kids in schools being not prioritized and the money's going to the illegals, but right in front of us. Yeah. Um, and here's the apprehensions graph in case you're wondering, like, here's what it looks like. Obama. <laughs> and then here comes Trump. It's all down. Yeah. And here comes Biden again. So they're going to blame Donald Trump for it. I don't know how. Yeah. Anything from 2021 forward. That was because of last Tuesday's bill. <laughs> yeah. That was because last Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, all right, let's go to the next story. Remember the people who got arrested for stomping out the cops in New York City and they got released on no bail? Released on no bail, immediately fled the jurisdiction? And that's, that's what we found out. They got arrested again in Arizona. Here they are. Same guy, same shirt? Yeah. You know, we or is this the New York? What happened? What happened? Come on, come on. All right. So they're laughing. They obviously don't care. They think this country's a joke. Mm -hmm. arrested again in Arizona. I'm going to say this. I'm obviously against illegal immigration for everyone for forever. Yeah. But when I was a kid growing up, the illegal immigrants we got were higher caliber. They were more of a, it's no problem type. Well, well, the, 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 yeah, Keep your I head agree. down and work hard and, oh, it's no problem. Uh, well, it was the tiptoe around mentality where it's like, around. if I get caught by the wrong guy, I could be fucking yanked out yeah. of here, right? And now it's like the I'm entitled to do crime attitude. Yeah, and then you're going to let me go, and I'm going to laugh. And that guy said in his, uh, when he was getting interviewed, oh, I'll be viral for this tomorrow. So they're, like, motivated by social media. Yeah, they like the uh, notoriety. Do you want to go to the Venezuelan Chicago thieves after yeah. this? I wish there was a place we could put the criminal illegals. Like, uh, do we have, like, projects that need rocks to be smashed for it? Yeah. That we can just send them to smash the rocks for the big projects, like building a highway or something? Yeah. let's get a chain gang going. Let's get a chain Round gang going. Round them up. Um, so, and this... The, you commit crimes in New York and then immediately flee to Phoenix, where you're eventually apprehended only because you were a high profile case. If they hadn't flicked off cameras and stomped a cop on camera, they'd be like any other uh, shoplifter or low level yeah. criminal who just kind of gets away with it. Yeah. Um, and so that brings us to a story out of Chicago, basically. The number of foreign nationals arrested for shoplifting in River North is soaring, officials say. One migrant has been arrested for shoplifting four times since December 3rd under three different names with three different addresses, which is kind of what we want to talk about here. The important part yeah. is not the fact that obviously foreign national shoplifting is going up. That's what they're up to, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a couple interesting little pieces. Sheriff's officials released the information this week as they announced the arrests of three men who allegedly ran a fake ID mill, an investigation that began after police learned that people were hiring the migrants to shoplift certain products in exchange for fraudulent IDs. So they're trading stolen retail goods for fake IDs. So crimes begetting crimes. That's like what the cartels do. Of course. That's like how they operate without being on the radar. Exactly. And they just got here. Um, and so we're going to put a mugshot of this guy, right? Three different mugshots for three different retail thefts in Chicago. Uh, and basically, among the foreigners accused of shoplifting in River North during December is a Venezuelan man who has been arrested four times under three names, Luis Canes Padilla, or maybe it's Ronald Brito Padilla, or possibly Jose Gonzalez. Jose Gonzalez. 
That should have been the first one. He phoned it in. That's, yeah. He got lazy. <laughs> Jose but, but Gonzalez. So, but so that's something you're going to see more of, right? Like where if somebody comes across the border, they claim asylum under a name, right? And then they get uh, arrested for a crime like they a DUI or shoplifting or something like that. They immediately start committing crimes, right? And then that identity has been burned. Mm. And so when they come in for their 2028 court date, to our beleaguered uh, immigration courts, th- that name's already burned, so they're going to have to come up with an alias. And, like, it kind of leaves these people, like, uh, untethered to anything. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, their identity doesn't matter, so they, they're they done trying to abide by, like, immigration rules or, like, being a member of – an upstanding member of society. Like, yeah. they, they can't say it. That's kind of like what a CIA agent does. Yeah. If they enter a country with a fake name, then they get like popped for something, and then it's like, oh, I gotta burn that alias. They have a burn bag, they put it in a bag, and they're like, all right, Jose Padilla Contreras is, is gone. He's no more. I'm Jose Gonzalez. Right? That's what they do. And so, like, that's like, how can you possibly have a secure nation if people are doing this type of shit? And this is Chicago PD who arrested the guy three times, and nobody puts it together. And yeah. they let him back out. So yeah. It's not like they keep him in the cell and they go, hey, whatever you want to call yourself doesn't matter. We got the physical body who's been harming everybody. Exactly. They it's have like, to let him go. They have to let him go. And then what? Oh, come back in three years for your court date and make sure you keep that same fake name for us or else we won't be able to find you. Yeah. Flight to Arizona. Yeah. They don't care. It's like, uh, and remember when it used to be cool with, uh, what's his name? Frank Abagnale, the Leo DiCaprio yeah. catch me if you can guy back in those days. Now it's like easier than ever. It's not even impressive. Maybe that's what that the whole point of that movie was. Yeah. Teach the illegals. Teach the illegals and to soften <laughs> our view on identity fraud. Yep. Wow. See, you're connecting the dots too, Richard. If you yeah, look, Well, you, you're saying that. I'm just saying it's like that. If you look, there's dots everywhere that can be connected. Yeah, I don't draw the marker between the dots, though. I just go, hey, those dots are kind of similar. Nice. I draw the marker between the dots, and then soon the whole paper's covered in black lines. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on. We're still in our immigration section. Uh, Democrats are most concerned about undocumented aliens, undocumented Americans. They did an interview. And that's who they said they were most concerned with. Check this out. The negotiation didn't have a path to citizenship. It was entirely on their terms in order to get Ukraine funding, right? Well, I mean, Chris, that's been a failed play for 20 years. So you are right that that has been the Democratic strategy for 30 years, maybe. uh, And it has failed to deliver for the people we care about most, the undocumented Americans that are in this country. So that's a senator. Yeah, that's Democrat senator from Connecticut. Yeah. And the people they they care about most, the undocumented Americans, which, as you know, is an oxymoron. They're just people who got in our borders within the confines of the United States. That doesn't make anyone an American. And like the thing that they have in common is they all broke federal law yeah. to get here. So it's like you're automatically a criminal if you're here illegally, no matter what your sob story is. Yeah. Uh, but it makes you wonder, why? Why are they so into these illegals? Why is it so important? And then you look at a man in the street video like this, and it kind of makes you able to connect the dots a little easier. You know, derecho para votar? Para quien se va a votar? Biden, que nos está ayudando a nosotros aquí. Por supuesto que por Biden. Le gusta apoyar a los migrantes. Mm-hmm. Sí, es muy buena persona. No, Trump es otra cosa. Es otra cosa y es otra cosa. So everyone wants to vote for Biden. And yeah. then they said, and I don't know if this is true, but they said because they entered legally, like legally as an asylum seeking migrant, that they're allowed to vote? No, that's not what they said. I mean, they said they're talking about the people who did it legally. Asylum seekers know they're not citizens, I think. But the whole point is, who knows? Once they're here, oh, I'm liable to... But remember in 2020 how, like, they used the mail-in ballots and then, like, legally... Yeah, that they were allowed to do mail in ballots because of COVID, but then that's like the loophole they use to send in millions and millions of mail in ballots. Of course. Maybe there's something similar getting cooked up here where all these migrants, because they're legally entered, not illegally, because they're classified not as illegal aliens, but as migrants or asylum seekers, maybe they'll try to get them to vote or maybe have them vote without showing ID in certain places. I don't know. But either way, no, they're going to have to talking. break. They're going to have to break the law to do it. And but it's like the people who already are comfortable breaking the law. Will they break the law? 
Yeah, for more money. I'm yeah. sure there's going to be some pay for votes type situation. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah. All right. Last piece of our immigration section. There's a sheriff who met with Christopher Ray, the head of the FBI, and listened to what he said. My name is Rick Jones. I'm the Butler County Sheriff, Butler County, Ohio. I just came back from a national sheriff's training in uh, D.C. We were briefed by the FBI director. There's 3,300 sheriffs in the United States. The President of the United States refuses to meet with the sheriffs of the 3,300. We have a hierarchy. We have a president. We have a vice president. The President of the United States refuses to meet with the sheriffs. He refuses to meet with them to talk about border issues or talk about crime that's going on because of the border issue. We were also told by Mr. Ray, the FBI director, that there are more red flags going off now than before 9-11. When I say red flags, meaning people that are here in this country that are wanting to do harm to us. We were also explained we're bombing two countries right now. Two countries. These people do not like us before this started. There's thousands of people here from other countries, 160 different countries. They're here not to be our friends. Some of them are coming because they're wanting to come here to the best country in the world, the way we see it. Some are coming here to do harm to us. So that does not sound good. Yeah, it sounds like things might get explosive. Yeah, and then he eventually says that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, because the threats are so serious, and they got more threats than they had when 9-11 happened. Yeah, Democrats want to import a uh, economic underclass who will be on the hook voting for them for a long time, and they may have accidentally imported some terrorists. Yeah, exactly. Accidentally. Mm. Let's see what happens. All right, let's move on. We're still in housekeeping. We have some things to get to. I've been doing something lately that I highly well, hold on. What would your alias be if if Fleckus got burned? Uh, Alan Greenwall. Alan Greenwall. I, okay. I already have one. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just curious. I, I don't have one, so I'm going to think, and uh, I'll get back you to you. You should be Richard right? Ratboy. Oh, <laughs> wow. Richard Rapaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'd be Alan Greenwall. That's my alias in college when I was in the Three Snack Mafia. Okay. Me, Harlan Quaid, and Wild Bill. Okay. All right, uh, let's move on. I've been doing this thing lately that I highly recommend to everyone watching. It's called listening to the radio. Mm. So when I get in my car, I usually plug in my phone and listen to the same 20 songs on repeat. And then for some reason, my phone wasn't attaching and connecting to the car. And then I just got stuck listening to the radio. But then I heard a lot of songs that I would never pick for myself on Spotify that I enjoyed. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to select a couple favorite stations and we're going to listen to the radio. Okay. And it's kind of cool. You hear all different songs that you wouldn't really like necess- or, or pick otherwise. And it like this was like the pitch from like 1948 when the radio was getting popular. <laughs> like, hey, it's all these songs you might not have heard. And so I really think it's it's cool. And it's kind of like the 90s, 2000s all over again. All right. We, we went too far ahead when we can pick our own music and attach to our phones. We got to go back a little bit. Now that all the way back to Amish, right to 90s and 2000s radio listening in the car. Fair. Right. And I've also been doing something else, which maybe not for everybody. I've been saying goodbye. The you full know, word. The full word. Everyone says bye. See you later. Goodbye. No one says goodbye. It's pretty and final. It's pretty final and it's pretty proper and official. Uh, and if you don't feel confident in trying it, try it on someone who doesn't speak English as their first language. Oh, they know goodbye. They yeah. like goodbye. They were taught goodbye. Yeah. So if you want to try it and get comfortable with it and then eventually work your way up to a real person. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just. Well, <laughs> well hey, that, I was actually yeah. thinking. I was actually thinking about this too. Like, hey, if all the illegals are here, you might as well exploit them. Mm, you know, that's interesting. maybe it's time to start that like hedge crew where you pick up all eight illegals from Home Depot type shit. They're oh, all man. here. You Great. might as well exploit them a little bit. It's not a bad idea. I, I don't know. I can't. I, I haven't ha- brainstormed that too much, yeah. but I feel like we might as well. I can't. Uh, what's it mean? To condone? Yeah, I can't condone. Cosign, but- whatever. If they're outside the Home Depot near you and they're looking to work and you got some jobs. Really low balling this time. There's so many of them. Yeah. And that's not bad. Yeah. Good work. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> um, all right. Let's move on. Uh, we have a new pet. Speaking of uh, people that don't speak English, okay. I found a factory in China's Instagram. Uh, and they do things like, for example, it says, it's time to get off work, but she hasn't finished her work yet. Should she be allowed to get off of work? And it's like a real factory in China. Let let this rip. (laughs) 
So they're just showing her uh, making spoons. Yeah, she's punching the spoons out. And they say, should we let her off work? And it's the Buyer's Star Kitchen Factory. <laughs> Starware Kitchenware Factory. Star Kitchenware Factory. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny. Yeah, I, I like, like it. stuff like that. It uh, connects us with like the dingy parts of the world we thought were unattainable and unreachable. Yeah. They have an Instagram. Exactly. Should we let her off work early? She's like a wage slave for making a, you know, 50 cents a day. And it seems like they're doing bits. Yeah. Which is good. I really like bits. All right. Next thing. We got a puzzle sent to the P.O. box. Uh, it's very cool. Look at that. There's me holding it. It's a puzzle of me and Richard Rapoy. The entire top part, the entire top third is just black screen. So how you did that puzzle, I don't know. Yeah. Very impressive. Thank you guys for sending it. If you have cool things to send us, the P.O. box is open. Also, take this opportunity to help us tickle the post to help us juice the algorithm. Make sure you like the video, comment, comment again, and then start talking about what you want to talk about. Send us stuff to the P.O. box. And last but not least, make sure notifications are on. All right, let's get into our final pieces of housekeeping. We're almost done. We have a piece of advice that I think show watchers could benefit from. Richard, could you read it? Your fear of looking stupid is holding you back. Exactly. And that's very true. But remember, only listen to this advice if you're very talented and you sure you have it, the it factor. That's important because if you don't, you could look pretty stupid and you don't want to look dumb. So it's like if, if you have the it factor and you're talented, don't let the fear of other people's opinions hold you back. But if you're not sure if you have the it factor, you're really talented and you're probably not. Let's assume the worst and don't really do anything because it could look cringe in front of strangers and all the illegals here. You don't want to do that. Yeah, at a, time, at a time where cringe on social media is such a currency, maybe beta test it on a small group of friends if you're yeah. thinking about doing something. Exactly. So don't let your fear of looking stupid hold you back if you have it. But if you're not sure if you have it or not, assume you don't and just keep doing whatever you're doing. Yeah, work at, you know, work at the gym. Yep, be a normal guy. All right, last page of housekeeping. We're going to go quick. The Rock Descent. Yeah. Look at this guy coming down the mountain. Wow. Now, this is a real sport. And I'm going to tell you something. I like moving down mountains fast like this. Yeah? I like you have a lot of experience with that? Uh, you know, I re when I go downhill quick, something clicks deep in my DNA. And I think that my... When's the last time you went downhill quick? I think my lineage and my heritage and my ancestors were fast descenders on mountains and hills. Because when I go down a hill or mountain fast, it like I get extra juice. Yeah, I just don't believe you for some reason. You don't look like a nimble hill hill descending type. You don't think I descend fast? Well, I think I gravity works. Going? Well, gravity works the same with everybody. So a uh, feather and a rock, you know? It's the well, same. Gravity's the same. I don't believe in that either. Well, feather and a rock. You ever see how light a feather is? How heavy a rock is? Oh, well, I don't believe you. You need a vacuum for that to fall at the same speed. All okay. right. Okay. And that's a cool sport. Yeah. But it's a bad sport if you're just starting out because the learning curve's probably <laughs> steep. You might die. Yeah, so it's like, oh, <laughs> you're not supposed to do this mistake. Yeah, you find out by blowing your leg out. I can't believe that was your take on this. That you think you have some genetic tie to I running do, down the I hill. I do have a genetic no, tie. No, you're full of shit. That's crazy. But how to come me? every time I go down the hill fast and I I pull out fine, I don't crash, my my DNA pulses in my well, body. What are you talking about? Something that happened in two thousand twelve? I have, you've never run down a hill. There's no hills in Florida. <laughs> I know. That's my so, point. That's like if I, I would if there were. All right. Well, I'll, I'll have to go out with you one day. and we'll, Find we'll me see, a hill. Yeah, we'll see you run down a hill. All right, All right. Last piece of housekeeping. This might be the most important announcement we've ever made. We are sponsoring a disc golf tournament. The Flex Start Fundraiser at Pine Straw Ranch presented by Fleckus Talks, the podcast. Yeah, it's happening in Eastover, South Carolina on February 25th. Sign up today at discgolfscene.com. I don't really like disc golf, uh, but I do think it's funny when a real event is presented by Fleckus Talks, the podcast. Yeah. And the guy who reached out to us is a longtime show watcher, longtime yep. uh, viewer. And he just kind of went on a whim and asked and Fleckus, you caught him on the right day. He said, yes, I'll sponsor the disc golf tournament. Send me the Venmo. <laughs> Um, so we sponsored it. It's a real thing. If you're a disc golfer in the Carolina area, East over South Carolina is where it's at. Sign up on discgolfscene.com. Happy to sponsor these guys, even though 
you might remember my views of disc golf. Yeah. But I like to sponsor stuff. So what's going on? They There's a $250 cash prize that's you did? That's mm-hmm. all you? You bankrolled it? <laughs> I just said, as long as it says presented by Fluckus Talks, you could do whatever I'm you happy. want the money. All right. So that's kind of funny. Yeah. No, that's good. That's cool stuff, man. And if you're a Fleckus Talks fan and you want to go and you live in South Carolina, go ahead. Yep. That's the way to do it. All right. We are moving on to Cringe of the Week. Our first clip of Cringe is Kurt Cobain trans Mr. Is that what we call him? Mr. We call him Mr. Sir. Mr. Sir. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Sir thinks Kurt Cobain is trans. I bet you didn't know that Kurt Cobain was probably trans. Here's why. First off, Kurt wore a lot of women's clothing. And when asked about this, they replied that they wore dresses all the time because they felt comfortable and free. Just look at Kurt in these pictures. They look so happy. And in an interview about their childhood, Kurt said that they mostly hung out around girls and that at one point they thought they might be gay. It's exactly what I did in middle school. Kurt is also quoted as saying that they identify more with the feminine than with the masculine. This is clear proof that Kurt did not identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. Of course, Kurt will never be able to tell us themselves, but the evidence makes it pretty obvious they were trans. That might be why Kurt's no longer with us. Maybe Kurt knew that we weren't ready. <laughs> well, that's the leap at the end. Yeah. Well, there's it's one. pretty obvious. Yeah. It, you know, trans, pe- trans people existed then too, right? Yeah. They were just like transsexuals. They called it like a little different. It was absolutely not mainstream at all. And he probably would have said something. Yeah. He was in Seattle. He could have tapped in. And yeah. you see how the, the, the he's using they pronouns? Yeah, Mr. They Sir. Said, they <laughs> said blah, blah, blah. Um, also, there is another compelling piece of evidence. If you want to say Kurt Cobain was trans, how Kurt Cobain's life ended is in line with how a lot of trans people's lives end. Yeah, unfortunately. So if, if, if Mr. Sir had said, and then also Kurt Cobain, huh, huh. That would have been like, hmm. Yeah, should have been part of his argument. Yeah, the first thing you said. Yeah, that's kind of the leading. And then the dresses. And then the dresses. And, and then, then the, the anecdotes weird. about hanging out with <laughs> girls. Like So <laughs> uh, there is a thing of like the trans people who try to transify our history. Mm-hmm. And they do it with like the, remember the Viking found, like the woman Viking found with yeah, yeah, a yeah. sword. And they say maybe they were trans, but it was really the sword of her husband who died in battle. Uh, maybe they were trans. Uh, so we kind of need te- uh, our tombstones. Our tombstones need to say, man, always a man. Never thought about any weird shit that will be invented in the future. Yeah. Man, always a man, zero trans. Yeah. Here lies. <laughs> Here lies King King George. You yeah, know? just so they can't go, whoa, yeah. always a man. All right. All there right. was another one I saw, and I forget who it was, but it was a woman leader, and uh, Mimetic Sisyphus was tweeting about it, and he said uh, there was like, this competent woman leader and they were like, well, maybe she was non-binary and it's like one of the only respected women leaders in history. And they're like, ah, probably wasn't a woman really. <laughs> so cross dresser. Yeah. They take from themselves too. Yeah. That's good. Let's go to the trans kid telling you to be who you are. Get, get this. This is so entirely wrong and bad. I don't get how someone could get this mad. I just, being who we are like that just sounds very simple but that that sentence like be who you are that is such like i don't even they're trying to take away our pride i don't get how people could be this wicked yeah we get it they're trying to take away the pride there's an argument that's made a lot of times for the trans community saying like we can't help it god made us this way it's like God made you how you were. You customized the ride quite a bit from the stock model. Yeah, you got a little weird with it, and you're getting pretty specific into what you're into. Yeah, it's well, very different from it, how the model came off the factory floor versus what you added to it or took off of it or customized. Yeah, and the, the phrase be who you are can be used as a positive, like be who you are, be trans, whatever, or be who you are. Yeah. You're a man. You're born a man. So it's one of those phrases that has a two-way go. It's a matter of how you read it with your tone. <laughs> exactly. Be who you are. Yeah. Don't be adding things to your underwear. And this kid can't even talk. It's like, oh, I just don't understand that this. It's like, get your coherent thoughts. Mommy's filming. Yeah, you that's know? a good point. Like, this is your pitch. I'm sure that's how the parents are off camera. Yeah. Like, let's go. Come on. Bring it. Yeah. Crying. Sadder. Yeah. You don't, You need to feel it. We need a thumbnail now. 
Yeah. It's like us. It's like podcasters. Yeah. All right, let's go to the pronoun obsessions guy. Yeah, this twink. Isn't it kind of funny that the only time we're even having conversations about pronouns now is when straight, heteronormative, homophobic people bring it up? Like, the LGBT community was like, hey, we're going to start identifying the way we want to identify, and then we put it in our email tagline, and we call it a day. Anytime these people see a comment they don't like, they click on a profile, they see pronouns, and it's like, oh, you're a pronoun person. You're so obsessed with pronouns. I identify as a toaster. Okay, Brave Little or Hamilton Beach, because I don't want to offend you. You know what I mean? You keep bringing... Oh, cute twink quip. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, you're teaching it to fucking kids in schools. Yeah, and you're saying this is the correct take to children. So that's, shut the fuck up. That's most of it. Yeah, that's pretty much all of it. I don't care if adults want to spin their wheels in the mud and do nothing. Yeah. And talk to each other in their own secret code. Exactly. I spoke to a medic Sisyphus about this, mm -hmm. who is linked in the description. He's always linked in the description. Make sure you guys follow him on either Twitter or Instagram. But he said they put social signifiers on themselves and hate when people don't react how they want them to. It's like wearing a rival team's jersey to a home game and then thinking, why is everyone glaring at me? Yeah, it's pretty much it. I agree. Mimetic well, Sisyphus is great. Well done, Mimetic Sisyphus. All right, let's move on. Should we move on? Let's move on. No, let's let's linger. <laughs> let's call this guy gay or something. <laughs> All right. The, you know how the Democrats always accuse Republicans for banning books because we don't want literal P-O-R-N in children's libraries and stuff like that because it's not appropriate for kindergartners? Yeah, the illustrations of some uh, non-straight person sucking a dildo that everybody put, read at the uh – School meetings. And they go, oh, you can't read that out loud. It's too vulgar. Then it's like, well, it's, why? if I can't read it to a room of adults, why is it offered to the a middle school library, yeah, middle school kids? Um, and then they always accuse us for wanting to like ban books. Well, we actually found some book banning that was going on. The Biden administration was talking directly with Amazon, trying to get them to ban and throttle books about, uh, I think, the vaccine Co yeah. and COVID. COVID. Um, so Jim Jordan, who is chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, he's, he posted this the other day in a long Twitter thread. He said, never before released emails subpoenaed by the judiciary GOP revealed that Biden White House pressured Amazon to censor books that expressed views the White House did not approve of. Um, and so I'm going to read a couple little lines here. Uh, so... Here's from the article. It says, a week later on March 9th, 2021, Amazon met with White House officials. This is after the White House emailed them some vague thing about like throttling the, all the books uh, that they deemed misinformation about COVID. Amazon met with White House officials according to the emails and the company's top talking points going in was whether the Biden administration wanted books blacklisted by the website or just suppressed in search results. Hmm. Um, and then, so they said, is the admin asking us to remove books or are they more concerned about search results or both reads the company email. Uh, and ultimately the pressure applied by the Biden administration apparently worked as the company put anti-vax books under a do not promote order the same day Amazon officials met with the white house. Ah, ban mm. books. They don't really care about banning books. They just want to get mad at us however they can. And they assume their audience won't connect the dots or look into it or say, Ooh, isn't this kind of hypocritical? And you know what? I don't know. Are, are we the same on the opposite side? Because I'd like to ban books, too, for kids. Yeah, I don't mind banning books. It just matters what the books are. Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't care what the sort of gay books exist. You guys can write as much gay porn and stupid shit as you want, but it's like what goes in the kids' library? That that, does, that's where we ban. Yeah, that doesn't, count a, that doesn't count as banning books if it's not in the kids' library. But then if you throttle something on Amazon, the number one seller of books in the world. Actual free marketplace uh, before this. That gets a little weird. That's way worse. And then uh, Kareem Jean Pierre will be like, actually, we did not burn any books. We just yeah. throttled the shit out of it. Yeah, um, we, we shredded it. But so, no, yeah. We could put it back together. We shredded it. We composted it. We compressed it. Um, but yeah, so I mean, banning books, they always accuse you of what uh, you want to do or what, what they're actually doing. So crazy. Great points. Very but, true. And we also find out about this always two and a half years later. There's this like slow drip of justice where it's like conspiracy theorists were right. Conspiracy theorists were right. You know? Mm -hmm. And then like you said, like like rules, erratic, rules for radicals says you accuse them of what you're doing yourself. Uh -huh. So they accuse us of banning books while they're actually banning books. And then you figure out, hey, you guys were the ones banning books. And then they go, oh. Real original. Yeah. We say you ban books, and then you say, "Oh, actually, it's us." We already know is the Republicans. Like they've already like set the narrative, so it's so hard to reverse it emotionally that it's like impossible to even correct it. 
because everyone on the left is like book banning Republicans. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's already a, embedded. They already branded it. It's a marketing and PR game. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. And they're good. All right. Last clip of cringe. The woman who's down to tolerate cheating. Say we were together. Would you tolerate cheating from me? Of course. I would. Now, why is that? Um, because men biologically cheat. Because you can go sleep with a girl right now, and it's just pleasure. For example, we're surrounded right now by a shit ton of amazing clubs. You can walk into the club right now, get super drunk, and just have a one-night stand. But you're still coming home to me, sleeping with me, providing for me, and doing everything you're supposed to. It's just biologically made the men are going to go ahead and cheat because it's just pleasure. You know what I mean? It's status, basically, when men cheat. This is why you can't live in Miami. Yeah, basically, this is one big advertisement against Miami. Yeah, and you know someone completely botched their marriage because they kind of were like, I'm allowed to, I'm a high-value male, I can go cheat and whatever, and she'll still take me back. And then she doesn't, and you kind of throw everything you had away, and if you were a high-value male, you actually wouldn't cheat. Yeah. You become a low-value male once you do cheat. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go back to the typical Fleckus saying, which is, you don't need all girls to like you. You just got to find one. Yeah. And you don't look in the streets of Miami. That's exactly. That's all I'll say. You don't want a girl like that. You don't. You want someone with obviously traditional values. Once you start thinking like this, it gets you skewed and put in a bad cycle. And it's not going to end in like a nice family unit with a high quality girl. You're going to get stuck married to someone like that. And then you're going to have daughters like that. Mm. You don't want stupid daughters like that. That's so important. True. If you like the girl you're with. Would you like a daughter that's exactly like her? And if the answer is not anything other than yes, 100%, then you're in some trouble. Smart. Don't get too down or too depressed, though. We're moving on to Urban Decay. It's going to get a little worse. Yeah. Uh, um, also, like, I, are we going to talk about this at all? The Senate just voted to independent bills to fund Israel and Ukraine. Oh, yeah. So that just happened before we walked into film. And it's like, fine, we can't get a border deal. We're going to do at least but, take care of Ukraine and Israel. we're all still going to send money to Ukraine and Israel. So yeah. they hate your guts. I just wanted that out there. They hate know. your guts. They steal your money. They steal your money on credit. They sent, We're sending Israel and Ukraine money on credit. We don't even have money. We're in debt up to our fucking eyeballs. We're fucked. Yeah. All don't right. get too down or too Don't depressed. get too down, though. You know, you, yeah. hey, you can go, you know, have fun tonight. Yeah. Don't get too depressed. There's a... Uh, there's a truck that drives up river in uplifting gold. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too down or too depressed. You might see something cool. All right. Urban Decay, our first story, the Oakland iPhone stealer. This is a video. This guy's stealing uh, iPhones yeah. out of the Apple store in Oakland. And you guys have probably seen it. Super viral this week. Ripping them off. One table down. Everyone's just standing and watching. It's interesting because they cut the the camera spins and there's like a cop car outside. Yeah. I don't think anything happened, though. I don't think the cop did anything. Um, yeah. So you remember how we covered last week how Oakland had all those stores shut down? They of didn't course. have Raising Cane's and Denny's and they weren't able to have anything. Mm -hmm. Apple's probably next one gone. <laughs> let's pull up uh, Oakland's stock price. Yeah, let's see. Let's it. see how Oakland's performing. This. Ooh, Ooh, down 91 percent <laughs> over, the over the year. Ticker down. Oak. Yeah, wow. <laughs> That's devastating. Uh, down big time. Uh, let's pull up uh, Oakland's animal equivalent and see how that's looking. Oh, no. It is a once uh, majestical whale covered in parasites. Yep. Probably going to die from that. Yep. That's too bad. It's a um, dying fish. And so here's, in parasites. The, here's the thing. Obviously, like these are these are a dime a dozen, right? These kind of stealing things. Mm -hmm. The guy knows he's got no fear. And we've kind of joked about people who weigh 500 pounds, and it's like you blew past rock bottom five times, mm -hmm. right? This guy did one row of phones. Nobody intervenes. Another row of phones. Nah, still not intervening. Like, it's kind of the same principle where uh, there were so many opportunities to stop this guy, and still nobody did, right? Yeah, exactly. And then also, he's stealing all these showroom floor phones, which we I'm pretty sure don't work. Apple can remotely brick them and make them non-operational. So right? maybe there's a world where you can outbrick the brick from Apple. Uh, but I think he's probably going to sell this to someone who thinks they're real phones and he's going to scam a different scammer. He's going to give like he's going to sell 10 phones to somebody for uh, 1500 bucks and then they're all going to be bricked. So this is just leg one in a multi leg crime <laughs> yeah. parlay. Exactly. So maybe, you know, he's scamming the next scammer or maybe they're selling it for parts. Who knows? 
Um, and then here, I'm going to play this too because I want to get more into the uh, parasitic thing. Oakland's only Denny's restaurant has closed because of safety concerns. The restaurant on Hagenberger Road near the Oakland airport had been at this location for over 50 years. 50 years, Denny's. Not, Denny's. Not some high end, it's not Nobu. Uh, plastic seats? Yeah. You know? Um, so Denny's can't even sustain itself in Oakland. And like we said the last week before, I, I just want to talk about it because we've seen it with cities like Detroit, where um, Detroit, maybe Baltimore, and Oakland's kind of the next one up. But it's kind of this world where criminals can always exist on a host, right? San Francisco's got all the tech money in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And th they can host, that host body is a great mighty blue whale, right? And all these parasites can kind of, you know, oh, I live here, I... I flip credit cards that I steal from the mm. restaurants and all that. I suck up scraps from the underbelly. But what we're seeing in Oakland is when the host body dies and now it's just crime on crime on crime. And then the parasites kind of start eating themselves. They're like, ah, Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> Denny's is the next target. Um, so I think Oakland's going down straight down the toilet. And um, it's kind of like a lesson where the host needs to play defense against the parasites Otherwise, the parasites will overtake the entire host, and then the host body dies, and then it's a lost city like and then Detroit. It's a parasite city, yeah. And it's like a Baltimore, Detroit, exactly, exactly. So uh, similar to almost a lost city, but not as bad because it's a real city, Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, Chicago in New York, L.A. Those types have enough like financial infrastructure to not necessarily die because of the parasites, but the parasites are eaten and getting fat. Yeah. There's a huge industrial base, a lot of small, like, you know, trains, transportation, all that stuff in Chicago. So yeah, but it's not exactly at risk of getting totally rug pulled, you know, exactly. But there are obviously problems with the school districts. We talked about this before. Not a single student can read at grade level in 30 schools in Illinois. And they're all uh, city of Chicago school districts, yep. the most of them. And a lots of people will say, well, these schools are underserved schools that just need more funding. Here's the graph of spending, K through 12 spending per pupil and their achievement results. So the red, the red, green, and purple lines are their scores, their test scores, which are flat and basically at zero. Mm -hmm. And then the blue line is the federal spending, which since like 2000 has basically skyrocketed. And as of right now is like, 500 percent increased mm -hmm. 375 yeah um and the kids so all the spending has increased like three four five fold and none of the kids know anything and then we found this other graph that shows the growth in administrative administrative staff principals teachers and student uh and students in public schools so the number of students has basically stayed the same the number of admins is up 88 percent in the last like 10 years yeah and then uh, assistant principals is up like almost 40% too. Yeah. And teachers and students are the same. Teachers score or uh, students, math scores, reading scores, whatever. They're all the same, but it somehow costs four times as more to get the same amount of kids not reading at grade level. Yeah. You doubled the admins mm -hmm. and the kids still can't read or do anything or learn anything. One school spends $56,000 per student and there's 44 students in a grade and not one of them can read. So if you need more money, what do you need the money for? Yeah, nothing. You can't. You need more money? It's like you're going to pay the kid to learn how to read? You're going to pay the kid's parents to teach him how to pay read? Pay him to do his homework. You know? You gotta, you're going to pay the parents to set some values into the kid at 10 years ago? It's over. Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing as the, the, oh, time. the Biden immigration bill from Tuesday. It's yeah. Trump's fault. It's the same thing. Like, yeah. you can't go back in time. You can't go back in time. Um, and, you know, the same thing is happening in a lot of industries. Um, this is not just for public schools. This is colleges and universities got administrator blown out. Look at, like, University of Michigan's DEI department and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, same thing with healthcare. Healthcare is paying for a lot of random administrators to shuffle papers and uh, talk about insurance and stuff. So I don't know. Is this just like what happens in the late development of a system? You spend more money to be worth way less? Well, you have 
people who exploit. Yeah, so they're just like, oh, we'll hire more admins. That's what happened to colleges too. Oh, it's the number kind of-, of admins just goes through the roof, and you're just giving jobs to people, but no one's doing what got you there in the first place, which is like we need to teach kids. Which is similar to Oakland. Like these people all want to get, they want to feast. They want to feast off those nice salaries and teachers' pensions, but the kids still can't read. And you know, it's mm-hmm. a parasite versus the host body again. Yeah. So Par- very parasitic. All right, let's move on. Uh, the kids stole a car and then got. They say kidnapped. So this kid stole a car, and the people who owned the car caught him in the process, and then they kind of kidnapped him, held him for ransom, and called the kid's dad. Two people in Columbus are facing felony charges after police say they kidnapped a 13-year-old boy after allegedly catching him inside their Kia. Police say the suspects forced the boy into their home at gunpoint and demanded $3,000 from the victim's father in ransom. Carla Rogner joins us live in studio with new details we now know about this case. Carla? Yeah, neighbors tell me there was a huge police presence at the apartment complex and the SWAT team responded to the kidnapping. The defendants were in court this morning and are each being held on $500,000 bonds. 20-year-old C.C. Prack and 21-year-old Zachary Boyd are accused of kidnapping, holding, and threatening. All right, so that's them. Yeah, we just had to get to the mugshots. I don't know, I don't know whose side I'm on because the kid was stealing the car. You caught him in the, in the process. He damaged the ignition. He popped the thing off the ignition. So mm-hmm. the car's messed up. And then you call the kid's parents and say, hey, give us three grand. I I, I don't know. Penalties offset. Replay first down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Penalties kind of offset. Put the kid in juvie and maybe give these people a warning. If you're not going to arrest any criminals, you can't you can't arrest these people. Yeah. They're taking the law into their own hands, which everyone's telling them not to do. But like you kind of have to. When there's no law being taken into anyone else's hands, like police aren't doing anything. Yeah. And then you where's the your- line, you know? And the cops are actively deciding that every time. Like, who? Uh, the little Kia boy didn't pass the line. That's yeah. normal. Yeah. Little kids steal Kias all the time. And, yeah. But kidnapping a car thief, that we haven't seen be- that one before. <laughs> yeah. So so it's tough because you don't know whose side to be on because it's like a lawless world that the Democrats created. Yeah. And they're also mad at Kia for making a car that's so easily stealable when it's really like you should be mad at the car thieves, not Kia for making a car that you can steal. Of course. So it's a catch-22 kind of. But uh, if you steal someone's car or mess up someone's car, you can really mess their life up. Yeah, and that's what I think Cernovich was posting about that recently. Because um, if you're, say, you're a guy with a van and it's all your tools in your car, you mm-hmm. break in, steal your tools, you miss like three days of work. Which can really affect your month, and say you have kids, and you yeah, know, you're paying for certain things. Like, remember back uh, Texas used to execute horse thieves. Yeah, yeah, kind of a similar principle. You know, there's a reason it yep. wasn't just being harsh. It's because your car, for a lot of people, is like the mo- one of the most important assets you have to keep your life going. Yeah, tied to your livelihood for sure. All right, let's move on to uh, we can move on to the L.A. graffiti. Yeah, this is just a real classic case of urban decay, so it had yeah. to go in. These are luxury apartment buildings or condos in L.A., and uh, they've been taken over. Look at that. Floor by floor. That's how it was in New Orleans. Yeah. Every single floor graffitied out. And these are like luxury buildings in kind of the heart of downtown, right? Yeah, I think they're building this building. Yeah. So that's why they were able to kind of like get up there and on the scaffolding or whatever. Mm-hmm. All right, last clip of Urban Decay, New York City, lovely this time of year, after the holidays. My kind of town. Winter wonderland. (laughs) This is on Fifth Avenue and 43rd Street, bro. He just climbed up on that fucking, on the the, uh, garbage can. All right, you get it. He's shitting in the trash can. He's shitting in the trash can directly. He's an animal. We had to blur it a little bit, but that's what's going on on Fifth Ave, right in Midtown Manhattan. New York, the Diamond District, baby. (laughs) City never sleeps (laughs) or uses the bathroom correctly. All right, well, don't get too down or too depressed. Okay. We're moving on to Uplifting Gold. Oh, the other thing. Uplifting Gold, Supreme Court is about to strike down the Colorado Muppets. That's good. The Supreme Court basically is looking like it's gearing up to absolutely shit on Colorado for removing Trump off the ballot. Uh, They have basically, turns out they have basically no legal standing. It just kind of did it. Mm. So that's an uplifting goal. uh, Colorado should get in trouble. Yeah. Can you punish them? And then you wasted everyone's time and you get to the Supreme Court and you lose 8-1 to or 9-0. Kind of like a slap on the wrist time, right? Aren't you embarrassed? Yeah. 
No, they're not, though. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Uplifting gold. We have some good uplifting. We have one main clip we're gonna, that we're going to end with. It's a little long, but we're going to start with the Spanish-speaking day laborer joke. On our outdoor kitchen project, let's ask Juan Carlos how much longer he thinks until we wrap up the project. What are you thinking, Juan Carlos? El problema es de que estoy solo, no tengo herramientas, a lo mejor una semana más, dos semanas más. Estoy solo, no tengo ayuda. Ese es el problema. He said it should be finished today. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Spanish speaker. Yeah. What's he saying? He's saying, I'm working by myself, yeah. I have no help, and it's a problem. Yeah, and one one week in the best case, two weeks, probably. And then he goes, yeah. done today. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's pretty good. All right. Yeah. See, the uh, the illegals have jokes. Sometimes. Sometimes. That guy might be illegal. Who knows? Nah, I don't, yeah, yeah. If you don't speak English, hey, can you blame me for assuming illegal? We That's kind of where we're at, guys, right? We didn't do it. Talk to your boys. Talk to your boys. Talk to the Democrats. They And that's the thing, too, is all these shitty illegals, like the criminals with the fake IDs, the multiple aliases, they're ruining it for everybody else. And that's what also something I noticed is there's no, like, internal policing mechanism between them. It's not like, hey, stop doing that. There's just fights at the migrant camps and, like, it's a, a point. it's a power struggle. So nobody polices anyone and the bad ones ruin it for the – Medium ones. I don't think there's any good ones. I'm not calling anyone good. Me neither. So there was also a stat we didn't get to. I just forgot to say it. Uh, the number of Venezuelan criminals arrested from 2022 to 2023, it went up 2,500%. That was just in Chicago, right? Just in Chicago, yeah. just Venezuelan. Yeah. So there's a certain type of Venezuelan rat running around. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to the truck who drives upstream. Truck crosses the water. This is uplifting. Maybe. Is, that, is this an American-made truck? Chevrolet? Yeah, Chevrolet. LTZ? Look, look at it go. It's pretty deep in the water, but he starts going all the way up like a, like a horse. <laughs> Love to see it. That's American muscle. We still make some stuff. We probably make it in Mexico. Yeah. But isn't that nice piece of machinery? Yeah. That's impressive. That's uplifting. All right. Let's go to the guy who's talking about the redwoods. I'm assuming in Northern California, the old growth and how they handle fires. I keep telling you guys that old growth forests are better for fires and monocultures make wildfires first. This is the best example. These trees had fire up to 100 feet tall on them. Didn't completely burn at all. Straight chilling, dude. Just some battle scars because they got Mother Nature's fire control armor. That two foot bark of beef. Doing work, maybe like 20 miles from here, a second growth redwood monoculture that loggers had is ashes, ashes, and the homies are chilling. They've got understory. They're not close to each other. No ladder fuel. Everything is based. Look at the. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Perfect. Didn't know that. The redwoods are strong. They have the thick bark. No burning the tree. Tree ba- tree burning not even bad. Fire not bad. Redwoods prevent getting fired. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah. There you you go. learn a little bit. And that guy's passionate. Yeah. That's what the real uplifting thing is. That guy likes trees a lot. Yeah. So make sure whatever you guys like in your life a lot, you keep doing. You obsess else, over. Yeah. You'll lose the soul from your eyes if you don't. It's true. All right. Our last clip of Uplifting Gold is a little long, but it's the Roofer Charity um, company. They're going around to people's houses and offering free free services. I have, a, I have a roofing business with my two younger brothers. Oh, okay. So what we do, we just drive around. And you can see how shitty our roof is. Exactly. I saw you have the damage, right? So yeah. what we do once a week, we go out and we, we give back to the community by providing free services. So I wanted to offer to replace the gutters on your house completely free. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, okay. So <laughs> well, like you can see, eventually we are going to need our roof done. Like it's got to happen soon. Yeah. You can this whole side. It gets every windstorm. Yeah, it gets blown off. I see off, it's really damaged. And they're yeah. pretty old, so they start to bend and they. Yeah, I see that. Like yeah, that. yeah. I can do your gutters completely free today. I won't charge you anything. I can't even sign it for you. Are you sure? Really? Yeah. Milos. Yeah. What's going on? What's Nothing. the? What's the? What's the? Nothing. We do it every week. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't get over this. Five hours later. Hey, everything's done, bro. Okay. Thank you so much. Like, we this found you. Wild. We found you, by the way. You found it? Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. No problem, guys. No problem. No problem. You're very welcome. You like it? So yeah, it was huh? amazing. Yeah. So listen, I've been talking to my brothers. Yeah. 
and we decided to come back and put a brand new steel roof on your house completely free. Stop it! What? No. No, that's what we're gonna do. No, no, no. No. What? No, guys. This is the, listen. That's what we do. This is your dream house, and roof is one of the major like repairs, investments in a house. So we wanna get that off your back. We're gonna come back and install a brand new steel roof on your house. So you have to worry about it ever again. I can't believe it. This is like, what is going on right now? <laughs> no, Did we just no. win the lottery? <laughs> Thank you guys. Really, really appreciate it. They're fabulous. This is something that's been on our mind for like a while. Like we're like, are we gonna do it this year or am I gonna throw some tar on the roof and try and get through the winter? Two weeks later. That's incredible. Huh? Thank you wow. so much. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Milos and the boys. Milos and his brothers. And it's obviously a marketing thing, too, for the Rudan Roofing. We'll shout yeah. them out, Rudan Roofing. And it's linked in the description. Make sure you guys leave them a positive review because they go out every week and they do charitable uh, giving back to the community. But that's Milos and the boys. Milos another, and another game for Milos. <laughs> another game for Milos. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's and that's kind of the charity that I think is the next wave because, uh, hey, Ameri taxpayers, we're doing charity. America is babysitting as many third worlders as we can right now. Lots of charity. But what about mom and pop? What about Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Who actually deserve the charity and then are probably trying to like balance their finances and support their family barely. They're getting smoked by inflation. The husband goes up and tars the roof every season. You know, like that's kind of the best form of charity. Somebody like say you're rich, right? And uh, one of your your husband or your daughter or something has a kid. It's like, don't be, don't be signing something to the red cross, go help the daughter. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Well to do people helping other well to do people is kind of like the next wave of charity. I think I agree. So very cool. Shout out to Milos. Make sure you guys leave a positive review for their roofing business linked in the description. It's very important. It goes a long way. And that's what we do on our Friday show with our shout outs. We also have some birthday shout outs. Happy birthday to Myrna, big time show watcher. She likes when I wear nice button down shirts and polos. So I try to wear something a little fancier today. And she's a big La La Land watcher, like, oh. like me. Oh, it's like La La Land. <laughs> um, happy birthday to Michelle Leanne as well. Uh, show watcher, her and her daughter, both are show watchers. Great. And her daughter is the one who got me onto my cellular detox journey and my healthy living. Wow. Changed my life. So. Couldn't have done it without you. You saved his life. <laughs> yeah. I was going in a bad direction. Yep. So couldn't have done that without you because you made your daughter who helped me. I have a shout out. Go ahead. Jim and Alexa, congratulations on the baby. Yes, the Jim and Alexa, congratulations. Very happy for you. Happy 29th birthday to Blake. His birthday just passed on February 6th. Him and his wife, uh, Quillen. Our big show watchers. There big you know. fans of the show. And last but not least, we have a rock stack. Here he goes. Someone doing a Fleckus shout out. You guys know how these go. Fucking hippies. And it's a, uh, what's it called? Mini Fleckus rock stack. Fleckus talks. Very cool. Well, another Fleckus talks in the books. Anything you want to say on the way out? Rob Smith. Rob Smith. All right. Another Fleckus talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Fleckustalks.com for bonus land, which is dropping very soon. And we are going to be talking about Tucker Putin along with some other things you're not going to want to miss. So make sure you tune into that and support the show. Keep us alive. Can't do it without you. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one. But the only reason the border is not secure is Donald Trump and his MAGA Republican friends. Mm -hmm.